Howdy folks, I'm Southern Wolf of Southern Wolf Studios. Welcome to Samurai of Hyuga. This is an interactive story by the people at Multiple Choice Studios. I find that it reminds me of a lot of those old choose-your-own-adventure books that uh, I used to read whenever I was young. This is probably one of the things that got me into visual novels and other choose-your-own-adventure stories to begin with. And I thought I'd change it up a little bit, try to make it my own. There is no music or anything else in this game. It is all text-based. I'll be adding some music and some tracks and all that kind of stuff to make it feel more alive. So it's not just me reading the story. From what I've seen of this, it's written fairly well, although there are a few grammatical errors and a few typos here and there. I will state beforehand, this is likely not going to be a weekly series. This story contains mature themes along with scenes of graphic nature. Mature themes include references to drugs, alcohol, and mildly suggestive content. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. All resemblance to any person living or real is purely coincidental. Discretion is advised. Now with that warning out of the way, let's uh, read it how they put it. Samurai of Hyuga is a brutal, heart-pounding interactive tale. Prepare to enter a land of silk and steel, where fantasy clashes against grim reality, and where good guys don't always win in the end. It's a harsh world with tough choices at every turn. Good thing you're the toughest ronin around. A bodyguard, an assassin, a savior. Become all those things and more. Will you be able to change your ways and protect those around you? Or will you succumb to your own bloodthirst and become the ultimate manslayer? Will you find love or lust? Will you adopt a code of honor or do whatever it takes to win? Can your spirit survive against your own demons? Combat, drama, and so much more await you in the first book of this epic series. Samurai of Hyuga. Let's get into it. Now this does have achievements, and as you can see here, I've gone through only the first chapter. And that's uh, what's brought me to want to bring this to all of you. Seems that there are 14 chapters in total. There are also stats. We have an impulsive and calculative meter, as well as a chivalrous and perverted meter. A charming and stoic meter, a drifter and protective meter, as well as a brutal and finesse meter. And finally we have an attunement percentage. And all of these stats will change as we make choices. And every time you go through this game these will be slightly different. And I imagine that gives you different endings depending on which one of these are in the majority or after a certain uh, percentage, whether it be 60, 70, 80 percent, one way or the other. Currently, we are unnamed and we do not have a uh, spirit. Chapter 1 Sake with the Oyamas. This upscale lounge smells of steamed dumplings. Far nicer than sweaty drinkeries I was used to, but the sound wasn't right. As much as I hate those compulsive old gamblers, drinking cheap sake just didn't feel the same without the patter of bakuto rolling bones in the background. Maybe it fit. The drink I was chugging down like rice water was going down too smoothly to be cheap. Luckily, the kid was picking the tab up on this one. She just didn't know it yet. <laughs> I'm not sure how you can stand that file. We're in one of the finest chatsitsu stands in the capital, which serves the highest grade tea around. Can't you at least pretend to appreciate it? That buzzing, prepubescent, and presumptuous voice belonging to none other than my tiny traveling partner. Lucky me. It's too freaking hot for tea out here. Why don't you go get us a couple of rooms? Any excuse to get the kid out of my face would do. The constant questions and commentary were starting to bite at my nerves. It made me regret taking up this bodyguard business in the first place. The pout I was so accustomed to seeing planted itself in my companion's face. The reply was muttered in the whiniest of possible ways. Why must I do it? My legs are just as tired as yours. The kid had a good point. We've been doing a ton of walking lately. A few weeks on the road was rough on anyone, especially weak bookish types. I didn't voice a reply, instead I let my eyes do the talking. They convinced the spoiled brat to move along and I was left to a blissful moment of silence. The truth of the matter was, if I tried booking lodgings at the renowned Sleeping Duck, I'd be shit out of luck. There'd suddenly be no vacancies available for a dirty sellsword who smells like sweaty dashi broth. In case you hadn't guessed it, I didn't exactly fit the image of a noble samurai. I wasn't supposed to be here. 
The eyes from my fellow patrons did their best to confirm this fact. As pretty as my face was, it was the katana on my lap that had them so perturbed. Yuck. Perturbed? I'd been around these nobles too long, especially the kid. But a job's a job. A well-fed man timidly made his way to my table after being goaded by his even better-fed wife. Sweat ran down his forehead to both of his chins. It was odd that he smelled so familiar, when in appearance he was anything but. There wasn't the slightest bit of verbato in his eyes. His gaze rested on my bare chest with my loosely fitted kimono displayed. What exactly is he looking at? A man. You are a man. As humid as it was in the capital city, he was lucky that I still had my road sashed up. We were in the middle of the hottest summer in recent memory, which is why I was drinking the sake chilled in the first place. No, you'd be a fool to waste expensive alcohol by burning it. Passing up on this dry apple taste and rich cedar aroma was a crime in and of itself. Uh, you're a samurai, eh? The phrase was a mix with equal parts fear and skepticism. Oh, and desperation too. You had to be damn desperate to mistake a half-drunken sellsword like me for one of the General Heisen's lapdogs. Those were purebreds. I finished off my cup of chilled bliss before giving a reply. I'm no samurai. Calculated has increased. Aye. It's amazing how much a single word can bring me back in time. A time of hunger and survival on the property-stricken streets of Ginfu. A time when I tried my best to forget, and for a while succeeded. My mood darkened as my warm buzz started to fade. The tart apple in my drink wasn't the only thing starting to sour with age. I'm no samurai and that's rented silk you're wearing. Work on your southern accent, or the royals here will flay you alive. The girthful man wiped the sweat from his brow with his sleeve, yet another tell towards his modest upbringings. I wasn't sure if I was starting to like him more or less, but I sure wish the kid would hurry up with our rooms. P please keep your voice down, Mr. Samurai. I, I mean, the title was... He fumbled around for the right word, he and I both knew the word he was looking for. He was just too afraid to say it. Ronin. My name is Ken Oyama. My wife and I are here with our child's arranged marriage with the Akiyama branch family. If you would sit at our table, your presence would bring us great honor. Ken whispered the plot as if he were a politician trying to usurp his liege lord. His daimono needn't worry. The only thing this pretender could displace is a bowl of udon noodles. His wife held up an orange harori, a formal jacket, and smiled ear to ear. I might have underestimated these southerners. If nothing else, they had come prepared. The scheme was to dress up a dirty ronin and pass him off as a semi-respectable retainer. A family without powerful hereditary ties, yet had a samurai in their personal employment? That meant wealth. And lots of it. Honestly, this plan might work. Should I help them? Yeah. But this isn't charity work. Drifter has increased. Compared with hauling the kid all over Huga, this job was a breeze. And make no mistake, this wasn't a favor from one southerner to another. Down there, it's a doggy dog -dog world. And I'm not just talking about the expression. And while this current scenery may sport more cherry blossoms and giggling geishas than I'm used to, my stomach still can't feed itself. I'll play samurai for you, Oyama Dono but not for free. My gut growled with anticipation. That smell I've been sniffing since I got here was finally going to be mine. Toss in a double order of dumplings and something to wash it down with. He nodded enthusiastically, and I reluctantly put on the orange-colored garment. Oddly enough, it fit me perfectly. He had mentioned a child, but I couldn't spot the potential suitor anywhere, unless, ah... Hidden behind the overstuffed roll of a carpet that was his wife, a graceful figure sat. Far from being a child, this figure, thankfully, looked nothing like the parents that birthed it. It was sort of attractive human form that forced my eyes to linger. What exactly was I looking at? A blushing bride in full bloom. You are attracted to women. Chivalrous has increased. She wore a silk blue for a dosa, a kimono with sleeves that graced atop the ground. An elaborate display of cherry blossoms were etched into the outfit's design. A white sash tightened around her waist, which was delicate and slender. A golden hairpiece fit snugly atop a braided bun of black hair. 
she was breathtaking, and any man who sat across from her considered himself lucky. I nearly pinched myself for fear I was dreaming. Fresh dumplings, rich sake, and a beautiful woman to enjoy it with? The capital city might not be so bad after all. I was about to take a seat wherever I wanted when I recalled that members of a noble caste like to make everything complicated. Trite traditions and an exhaustive amount of ways to disrespect someone were nestled in every corner of high society. I won't pretend that I knew or even cared about half of them. I'd like to think that I have better ways of wasting my time. Even so, I was customary for a samurai to sit by their lord for protection. The seat beside the strapping future wife was also open, and that's tempting for its own reasons. Where should I sit? I'll sit beside Ken Oyama. Stoic has increased. I had all the intentions of playing my proper part when soft hands grasped my arm. They belonged to none other than the cute maiden who beckoned me to sit beside her, or should I say entice, with a look that I couldn't turn down. I can be stubborn when I want to, but I didn't want to in this case. I took a seat beside her. Thank you for joining us, Samurai-san. My parents have sacrificed much to grant me this opportunity, you being on my, our side. It puts their mind at ease. The words were light and flowed like a breeze and bared no hint of the homeland she had left behind. In fact, a thin upper lip, a large lower one, where have I seen those before? Pair that with sharp, downturned nose? Makeup couldn't hide those foreign qualities. While her parents were markedly from Ginfu, this was a different creature entirely. The collective silence of this odd family was starting to make me uncomfortable, at least until the dumplings I bargained for arrived. My heart skipped a beat after seeing two plates packed with steaming goizas placed in front of me like I was an emperor's son. The geisha poured the first cup of sake, with a fake smile as if I was her favorite customer. She was quick to leave afterwards. Akiyama. If I hadn't been entirely sure what the kanji, the fancy written characters for Akiyama, were, I was now. Two men wearing green robes had the words littered all over them. They'd even have it written atop their faces if tattoos weren't dedicated Yakuza. They may not have belonged to a crime syndicate, but they didn't seem to be nobles either. Oh, and unless the country of Hyuga had grown radically progressive in recent months, these two guys weren't the parents we were looking for. You are the Oyamas, correct? Your daughter is very beautiful. The lankier one remarked. But his eyes were all over me. I'll give you one good guess why. You have a retainer as well. And here I thought my presence would go completely ignored. I knew that look. He was asking himself a question. A question that confirmed what this was. It looked like I had no choice. The pause here meant it was as good a time as any to introduce myself. Unlike everyone else at this table, and perhaps this city, I had no intentions of hiding who I was or putting on false airs. I'd tell them who I am, my ex-profession as a ruthless killer. Impulsive has increased. I knew what these two men were when they walked in to the sleeping duck. They didn't slouch on their approach and they walked with their left hand against their belt if by habit. That's where their weapons usually were. Of course they weren't there now, no. Their jaiti were hidden just above their sash in an odd looking fold. While their jaiti were a little more than iron bars, it sported a hook made for catching katana blades. It was also the symbol of law enforcement in Hyuga. For a ronin such as myself, the weapon represented a guaranteed bad time. I fought and killed my fair share of thugs and police officers to know there was hardly a difference between them. Both preferred to outnumber you and neither cared for a fair fight. The question he was thinking to himself earlier was whether or not him and his buddy could take me if it came down to it. The answer was a resounding no. Unlike these police academy dropouts, I came from a far rougher upbringing. The sort of upbringing where you didn't have a family name. A single name was good enough. But what was it? We'll go with the Japanese word for wolf. My name is Okami, and I kill people for a living. Ken Oyama intervened to calm the tense atmosphere down a few notches. I could understand that he wanted negotiations to go as smoothly as possible, but he was clueless about what the situation was. It'd be nice to be that naive and stupid. Good sirs, you, my name is Ken Oyama. My daughter is anxious to meet your young master, Akiyama. Where might he be at? The nobleman, in appearance anyway, was rudely interrupted by a curt explanation. The type that answered few questions and prompted a few more. Tage Yuji-sama is at his mother's bedside. Unfortunately, our lady has grown gravely ill in recent weeks. We will escort your daughter to the Akiyama estate for a private meeting. It is regrettable, but we ask you two to stay here until we bring around another carriage. 
I was so impressed by this tale that I almost felt like clapping. Maybe I was used to the scheme of bandits and hoodlums. This one far more crafty and far less violent. And from that understanding expression on the Oyama's face, it was far more effective too. Whether this was a kidnapping for ransom or a high class human trafficking plot would all depend on what the family could pay. And knowing these southerners for what they were, they'd be sending this girl right to the slave market. I felt a pair of eyes beside me giving me a glance. The would-be wife's expression was difficult for me to figure out, and all that makeup wasn't helping my efforts either. Genuine fear snuck out from that pretty face, as it seemed at least one member of this odd-looking family knew exactly what was about to unfold. Stealing her determination, the graceful figure arose with a sort of nobility that was difficult to put into words. I wasn't sure if it was a sake or something else, but I was getting an uncomfortable feeling in my chest. The sort of feeling the man gets before he's about to do something stupid. I stand up. As soon as I was up off the tatami mat, the two Akiyama swindlers were already pleading for me to sit back down. The lanky one even had his hand against his stomach to make sure his iron club was still there. Never a bad thing to check before a fight. Your retainer needn't worry. We will protect her with our lives. Remain here until the second carriage arrives. He shouldn't have said that. If there were one thing dirty ronin like me couldn't stand, it's taking orders. A display of my skills will scare them off. Finesse has increased. While anyone who knew my past might think differently, I actually tried to avoid violence whenever possible. It wasn't my fault that I was so good at self-defense. These two hired helpers might be more expensive than the two-bit thugs I was used to dealing with, but I wagered neither one were willing to die today. To people who carry weapons and a bad attitude for a living, reasonable words tend to fall flat, which is why I tossed up a chopstick into the air in the first place. Chopping it in half was a stereotypical samurai parlor trick, and while it wooed geishas, I preferred going for something a little more advanced. The timing had to be perfect. It was. When the stick fell beneath my chin, I flipped my thumb against my katana suba, the flat guard where the blade meets the hilt. The trick here was to apply just enough force to the blade to reach the chopstick without the whole blade flying out of the sheath. If I messed up, I'd look like a complete idiot. The chopsticks weren't weighed evenly, and even the high quality ones were very smooth, making balancing one atop your blade next to impossible. But with a steady hand and enough practice, the stick bounced once, twice, and then rested gently upon the flat edge of my sword. I kept up the balancing act while talking them down. A quick draw with a steady hand, a flick of the wrist at a precise force and timing. I gave the lanky one a blank stare and frowned, disappointed that I had to explain this in the first place. His hand was clutching his stomach, still uncertain of what to do. If you pull out that iron baton, you'll be dead before this chopstick hits the floor. The silence that followed was heavier than both the Omiyas put together. The scowl on their faces usually would have signaled danger, but it meant the very opposite in this case. Their minds have already been made up. They decided to settle for mean looks and foul language instead of anything of actual substance. Ksatari, whatever. You're not worth our time. Let's beat it, Kizo. They weren't leaving fast enough for my taste. I let the chopstick fall and did a sudden stutter step, which caused them to flinch back a few paces. I couldn't hide my smile as I returned my blade to its sheath. They were scared, but they were just too bullheaded to admit it. Just as they were on their way out, foreign bride-to-be slapped her hands together twice in succession. For a moment, I thought she was applauding me, but that was before a group of a dozen patrons of the Sleeping Duck jumped up to arrest and remove the Yakiyama goons. Typical tea drinkers are nowhere near this coordinated, and I found myself getting real sick of not knowing what's going on. You overcame them without a drop of blood being spilt. Very impressive, Okami-san. Thank you for your aid in this affair. Affair? Just what have I gotten myself roped into? This all felt like one bad kabuki act, where everyone was in on the joke but me. I made certain to add this experience to the list of reasons why I despise Yamato. It was time to get some answers. So I'll take it you're single then. Charming has increased. Perverted has increased. So I'll take it that you're single then. I gave her a sly smile. Yeah, she fooled me and ruined my lazy afternoon of drinking. There was a silver lining to all this. I still had a chance at this exotic looking babe. I wish I knew her name though. My forwardness is usually something members of the noble class just can't handle, and this fine looking specimen was no exception. Red blushed out on those smooth cheeks, but unfortunately the fish wasn't taking the bait. Didn't expect it to either. 
Catches like this one never come easy. I... I don't see how that's relevant. Thank you for helping us during this internal investigation, and for potentially ending a series of high-profile abductions. Great. Happy ending. The only warm, fuzzy feeling I was getting inside was the last bit of my buzz dying away. If she was expecting me to smile and laugh off being manipulated, and even worse, unpaid, then... Whatever. I needed to check up on the kid. The gang of plainly clothed ninjas had already extracted the two culprits, and the lounge of the sleeping duck returned to normal almost immediately. Unsettling. I was on my way out when I get a name and a healthy dose of foreshadowing. My name is Toshi. I look forward to working with you again soon, Samurai-san.